Man, it is another week, and I am joined by Demetra K from the Demetra K Show. Yeah. I'm Donovan Sadiq. You guys have just tuned in to Don't Believe the Hype, and I'm telling you, there's a lot of stuff going on out there in the news for those that have not seen. And D, I need to get your opinion on this because people have been clapping at you for at least a couple of months now. What can I say? You know, uh, what can I say? Well, you know what? Well, you know, there's two ways of looking at that. When they clap at you, that's just saying that they're watching your show and listening to your show. That's fine. That's fine. You know, because your numbers are looking good. Well, you know, it, you know, and you're, you know, you get that message out there. You know, that's all I strive to do is just get the message out you there. I mean, you take it or leave it, like it or love it, it's there. And do some people will. are grasping what you're oh, saying. Yeah. And in the next segment, I want you guys to stay tuned and be ready for the next segment because we are going to get into some serious stuff. Going to be on it, cracking. And this is going to be a special edition of Don't Believe the Hype, and we are going to extend it. A little bit because we want to get all of this stuff out and let you guys <laughs> know what's going on. So again, I'm Donovan Sadiq, joined by my co-host uh, D K from the Demetri K Show, and what we try to do is debunk and get through the propaganda and the BS, yeah. and you know, to tell you guys, here are the facts, or here's here's our opinion. You know, do with it what you go want. and look deeper and look deeper go than what it is. Surface. So so don't believe that. So uh, what I want to talk about is for a long time now, who remembers the original Aunt Viv? A beautiful, slinky, dark chocolate, chocolate sister. Chocolate sister, I remember. Yes, uh, Janet Huber. And you talk to a lot of people, and, and no shade to Daphne Maxwell Reed. You know, she was put in a position to do what she has to do. But Right, and now we know why she got into that exactly, position. Exactly, exactly. But um, a lot of people, you know, to them, Aunt, Aunt Viv is the... the Janet Huber, the, right. the black chick. And I, I didn't, I, you know, I'm not a fan of Will Smith because I know him as a rapper, happy rapper. Uh, so I don't really care for his acting. I, and believe it or not, I have, I barely watch episodes of The Fresh Prince. So I'm not yeah, a fan. You're like me. I watch yeah. maybe one, one or two, two yeah, like if, uh, pieces here and there, if but you know, a certain star was on there. I wanted to see that episode. It. Right. I never followed it. So I'm going to take my gum out of my mouth when I'm <laughs> doing those. But, um. So, uh, if you guys have been following uh, recently, over the last couple of years, Janet Huber has actually, like, people think, you know, oh my gosh, she's, she's, you know, lost her mind. She's going in for Will and Jada. And it initially started with the Hollywood uh, thing when Will didn't get a Oscar nomination for what was it, Ali or uh, the, uh, Pursuit of Happiness? Concussion. Oh, Concussion. You're right. It, it, it was Concussion. Yeah. And so they're like, oh, boycott. Why are you asking us to boycott? Because your husband, but that, but that's another story. Well, because it was her husband, right? And so Janet Huber chimes in and says and starts telling what was really going down. Mm-hmm. And so recently, Miss Hubert started a thing called Janet Hubert's Butcher Block. <laughs> <laughs> and well, you know why she said the butcher block because J- uh, Jada Pinkett has the red table talk, right? That you can see on Facebook. Facebook. So she said Jada Pinkett has the red table uh, table talk. Now I uh, welcome to Janet's butcher block, right? Right. <laughs> and I, I'm I'm gonna uh, put a link to uh, Miss Hubert's um, reply to you know to her butcher block and and the uh, comments below. And for those mm-hmm. on the show, uh, go to YouTube and you'll you'll see it up there. And just look it up. I mean, I happened to run across it because you know I don't really follow. Anything with Will Smith. I, I, I'm just not a fan. Right. So, um, you know, when I saw this, I was like, wait, is this an old rant or something? And I'm thinking of something I've never seen. And it, it was a fairly recent rant. And right. uh, I, I think I, I, did I check you in on it? You did. Um, so, yeah. So, well, what did you get out of the rant? You know what? Let me give you guys a piece of it so you can kind of understand what, what we're talking about. So just stand by. So, you know, what did you think about it well i i thought quite a she she's throughout she's, the whole thing she had a lot to say and i was actually looking trying to validate what she was saying in regards to um his production company his production company overbrook entertainment where she said that basically how dare he and jada get mad at hollywood or are the oscars not um remember when they had the hashtag oscar so white yeah that was actually the boycott that jada started because like you said mm-hmm. Will didn't get nominated, and a lot of other black people didn't got, get nominated. But specifically, he didn't get nominated for the movie. I think it was Concussion. Concussion. Mm-hmm. And so in that, um, her on her butcher block, <laughs> she mentioned how dare they talk about how something be, is so white 
when they're they don't hire black people mm. within their production com- or production company. Mm-hmm. And I guess some of the movies that they or a lot of the movies from what she was saying um, that they produce are not black, black oriented, black oriented or anything like that. And so. To your well, earlier point. Well, you know, it was kind of funny. Didn't Spike Lee allege something like that when he, he's making Ali? And Spike was like, I can do the move. You know, you know, it's a black right. icon and stuff like that. And Will said, no, I'm going to go. And Spike had kind of alleged, like, look, dog. Right. So. Yeah. And so, I, so that's what piqued my interest. Like, well, if that's true, then, yeah, where do you get off talking about something being so white when you don't hire your own people? And then another thing, she took Alfonso Ribeiro. Ribeiro. Uh, how have you say it to task because uh, I guess he uh, co-signed a lot of Will Smith's yeah he did um, talking about did. she got fired yeah and all this he, other he stuff. did to um, to Janet but I won't use the term she called Alfonso <laughs> I'll use it basically she said and I quote his tampon yeah she likened him to a, that a right. female a feminine product mm-hmm. uh I used one at that yeah, because she tampon. said <laughs> yeah. it wills tampon, mm-hmm. and she's basically he's co-signing this stuff, but he's she's like, and he's complaining that he's not getting work, yeah, because you, he's been you, typecast. Because yeah, as, you're right. He, she said, but maybe if you stop running around here doing the Carlton all the damn time, <laughs> you wouldn't be stereotyped, right? And you could get some work, and then your boy, who's supposed to be your boy, he should have given right, you some he ain't work. Giving you no roles and that stuff, so it's like I, and see. The, the, the rant started off is because somebody, mm-hmm. and she said it was Perez Hilton, um, the uh, infamous blogger that, you know, started really like this whole gossip blog thing. I think even before TMZ yeah, came about, he did. He Perez did. Hilton was around, but she, in her words, called him a man bitch, mm-hmm. said that somehow he got a hold of that original, what people are calling a rant that was on her page and took it and a couple other people ran with it and made it, just kind of spliced it up and didn't tell the whole story, which is why she was doing this Butcher block segment. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, but she was basically saying that she was blackballed. Okay. And it's ruined her life. It's ruined her career. She said before she got on the Fresh Prince, which she regretted doing, mm-hmm. she was uh, um, an actress, a dancer yeah. on Broadway. Yeah. So she had a she, lucrative career before she, did, she got there. She did what artists do mm-hmm. in, in honing their craft. She worked at uh, as a waitress, you know, and worked her way through. That's what she said, yeah. And, and learned mm-hmm. the craft. And whereas, like, Will Smith, who, and you know... Unfortunately, in the nineties, that that's what happened. A lot of these rappers turned actors. Yeah, you had your LL. Yeah, and, and then right. you know they didn't go through the craft to learn that craft. They were just. Oh. And that's what she said. That's right. what she said. You know, she says, um, "You're not um, a skilled actor per mm-hmm. se, mm-hmm. as I am. Mm-hmm. You know, I've worked hard to get where I was before I did the show, and for whatever reason, they had a dispute. I guess it was over pay. Right, right. Because because, uh, because she was saying, I mean, at the time. That's when friends and them were getting a million but episodes per a to, cast member. It, it sounded like Will was getting the King's ransom of the money, which, right. you know, the show was centered around him. So you can get that to some mm-hmm. degree. But what about the other cast Right, members? and it sounds like he didn't go to bat for them. Well, um, from one of her previous rants, don't quote me, mm-hmm. I think she had said where he was like... Um, Y'all get yours. Right. I'll get mine. And basically, you know, alluding to the fact when she was young, mm-hmm. that he was a snotty nosed kid trying to run a show and everybody mm-hmm. was catering around, around him. his, you know, wants and rants or whatever it is he was doing. And so she ended up getting a bad rap, I guess. Mm-hmm. Sort of like the, the old school Monique. What was what's going on with Monique now? She got a, a, a bad rap for being difficult right. and all that other stuff. Mm-hmm. But she's just like, I want my money. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and so... um it sounds like he didn't help her much. And since then she hasn't really worked. Mm-hmm. I mean, I can't really think of one single thing. I'm not saying she hasn't, mm-hmm. but I personally can't think of one single thing that she's done since mm-hmm. the fresh Prince. Mm-hmm. because I, although I didn't watch it, I know the backstory. And as that is, she was also pregnant on the show. So she talked about yes. that too. Yeah, you know, and- that I, I even let you guys write that into the script, you know, me being pregnant. So when she left to go have her child, <laughs> That's when I guess she got word somehow that she was no longer welcome. And then that's how light skinned Aunt Viv came, came into, into the, picture. the picture. Right. Wow. That's that's mm-hmm. that's that's so. Dog but, style. you know, she's more or less fashioned this butcher block, too, because she says she's tired of people lying on her and making it something that it wasn't like she's just lunatic that's ranting mm-hmm. and raving and jealous and she can't get over it because she was fired, per se, and all that other stuff. She says it's not that, but she just. 
I guess too, and I and I get this part mm-hmm. because we do see Will Smith. He's this, I guess, inspirational guru now, where he's well, he that's what he does. He's giving you these law of attraction theories, and you know, and you know, him and Jada are telling people how to live an awesome life and just breathe. Yeah, just and, do movies where you're peeing on a crowd in New Orleans. You stupid! And all that no, I didn't say all of that, but they 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 are telling people to um to vibrate higher, to reach for higher levels mentally and spiritually, and all this other stuff. And she's like. How is it that you're the authority on spiritualism and doing the right thing when you have stood by the lie of what you've done to me since the Fresh Prince? And been silent about it. And been silent about it and allowing people to um, brand me as this difficult black woman. Mm -hmm. And she also admonished black people by saying... I'm so tired of black people. She said, I gave my, what she said, my black card away Mm -hmm. a long time ago. ago. She said, we are the most, we are the meanest people. On the earth. On the earth. Now, and those are her words, the meanest people on the earth. Now, I don't know about the meanest people because, you know, we had a lot of stuff go on with black people, like slavery and stuff. Mm -hmm. But I would concede the fact that we are probably one of the, not, I won't say the, but close to being the most judgmental people on the planet. Hmm. And I was having this conversation with Al earlier saying, you know, I think we have it bad to where, let's say with Janet's situation, I look at Aunt Viv, she's just ranting and raving. But we won't say, okay, what's behind this? Why is this lady mad? Don't believe the hype. Right. Mm-hmm. Did she just wake up one day and just, oh, she's mm-hmm. jealous and she just mad because her, I've seen people say that stuff, but now since she had her little butcher block <laughs> series, you can see people mm-hmm. are starting to say, okay, wait a second. Let's start listening to her now because I think she's right. really on to something. Right. And remember, don't call her Aunt Viv. If she wasn't at your Thanksgiving table, she ain't <laughs> okay. your aunt. Okay. Okay. So. Uh, but she also um, took Jada and Will to task for um, airing their children's business out all the time. And she says, and I'm paraphrasing, but you guys are a cold piece for airing some of the very personal things about your children out to the world. Like, at what point in time do you separate your life from the world? Like, everybody doesn't need to be on a, a, a need-to-know basis with everything you're doing. Right, and you know, and what I don't like about when people do that, and you put your children out there, and then when people start criticizing them or making memes on them or whatever, then you want to get mad. And that's what she said, but she said that they, she feels that, and, you know, for lack of better words, she failed to protect them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They, they, uh, she or Will and Jada failed to protect their children. And then, to that point, if you take it a step further, it's like, well, is that why... You know, perception wise, the, her kid, their kids have the issues that they have. You know, could be, could be. You um, have Jaden running around in a dress and skirt. Um, and uh, real flowers. quick, I, I don't mean to interrupt. Uh, just got a news flash, you guys. It's very important. Uh-oh. News flash: California just became the first state to end cash bail for people awaiting trial. Oh, I, I heard about that last so, night. Buddy. Yeah, so that's uh, that's going to be very, very interesting. How that's going to play? Well, what into does that mean exactly? Like, if you get called in, they don't want cash. You got to have. What, a credit card? A credit card or some other means of things. So a what lot of, difference does it make? It's another way to keep black people and people that brown people who don't have bank accounts and stuff into jail. All right, I just can I give you a money order? Uh, maybe, can I yeah. put, get it? I mean, if but I'm, it's going to take you longer to get it. But if I'm needing a money, if I need a bail, and usually bail is not very cheap. I mean, sometimes right. depending on what it is you're doing. Mm. But if I need that kind of money, I just go set up me an account or something. You know, if, mm. if that's what it, I mean, I don't know. The yeah, details, but a lot but, of us don't have accounts. So. Well, hell, a lot of people ain't got bail money. So what difference yeah, do it make? Make, You know right. what I mean? I hear you. Mama and I already gave up the house for two <laughs> yeah, sons for, ago. Yeah, for uh, for Cleophas. Right. So back she, in the day. she fresh out of mortgages, boo. Right. So uh, I just want to give you guys a, a quick thing on there. I got a quick flash. But back to Aunt Viv. Um, you know, uh, you know, for a while, you know, and, and, and in the rant, she, well, I can't say it, in the butcher's block. Butcher's block. She, I love that term, yeah, actually. Yeah. Uh, she was also, so, you know, and like I said, I'm not a fan of Will Smith and I'm not saying because I hate him, but because I'm not a fan, I'm looking at both sides of it. And she made a, a glaring uh, thing that was very important to me. While some people have come out and corrected the record and stuff, he's remained silent. Well, my thing is this, because this is, uh, you know, from the Monique thing and, you know, a mm-hmm. couple other cases here and there. Why is it that we have a hard time believing these people when they say they've been um, railroaded and mm-hmm. uh, blackballed? Because she white wasn't the star ball. of the show. She wasn't the star of the right, show. Right, but that's what I'm saying. Why do we have a hard time believing that? No, no, she wasn't the star. But if, Rick, but if the star says it, oh, we believe right. it. We, 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 we believe it. I, 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 You're I a minor just, player. I, I don't understand it. Like, yeah, people lie. I'm not saying they do. Mm-hmm. But 
like I feel like I'm a good judge of character, mm-hmm. you know, just by listening to people, body language and stuff. Mm-hmm. And from watching her, Janet Huber, I didn't get the sense that she was lying. Mm-hmm. I don't even I didn't even get the sense that she was a bitter, mean woman well, who the light didn't turn out right. I didn't get that sense. Well, from her. you know uh, what I did get from her watching the, the the video, I did get the sense that she's uh, committed to her conviction. You know, she she's like this is the it. I mean, she hasn't changed her demeanor whatsoever. But right. I have noticed she does look like. You know, like it, she's it's consumed her. You know what I mean? Not like. But let oh, me know. But I get, I get what you're saying, and right. so let me just expound on your point or ask mm-hmm. you this because I agree. I, I agree when something consumes you yeah. to the point of you can't think of anything else. It is mm-hmm. toxic and it does yeah. have a toll on you outwardly. But perhaps it's consumed her because she just like I don't want you to get away with what right. you've Do done to me. Because you know right. some people are just that way. Right. Like I. It, I will go to my grave <laughs> proving right. that you did right. me wrong because I don't want and, and a lot of times when people are that way, it's not about me being I have this uh, ultimate axe to grind and mm-hmm. I'm just never going to be sharp enough. Mm-hmm. It's I want to clear my good mm-hmm. name because mm-hmm. like she said in the beginning. I was somebody already accomplished before I I got the Fresh Prince, which she says she regrets doing because it ultimately ruined her life. Mm -hmm. But so and she also said in this video of the butcher's block, if you will, Mm -hmm. that she she's not going to be on the earth that much longer. So was that her her telling people she's dying or so or something's going on? Maybe for her. The fame and and the fortune and stuff is not as important as it used to be. Mm -hmm. Maybe if she is dying, I don't know. Well, maybe it's important to her to clear her name so that mm-hmm. when she dies, her legacy is not that of, well, uh, dark skin on bid was just mad because, right. you know, life didn't work out for her. Mm-hmm. So I, in that respect, I don't blame her. Mm-hmm. I don't blame her. Well, I'm going to say this. Karma is a motherfucker. Mm-hmm. So if uh, and, you know, and, and I could kind of see it now because, you know, Will had his Hollywood crest. And he's been going down ever since because everything else he's been in since has been boo boo. Well, now he's, as she said, he's shifting into this um, motivational guru, if you will. Because I've seen a lot of quite mm-hmm. a bit of his stuff, and he has good things to say. But to Janet's point, how genuine are those things if you've screwed people over to get there? And yeah, and you just you, your mouth is zip when it comes to making it right. right so, uh, well, what, what's that old saying? The very same people you screw over to get to the top you are have the to very see. same people you're going to see as yeah, you head toward on the, the way down. You're going to have to see those same people. people. So, so yeah, I mean, I. I I like um, Janet Hughes. I do. I I, I like her. um, I think she's genuine. And I just, I honestly do feel sorry for people like her and Monique because who they really are and their their talents and stuff gets overshadowed by narratives that people with no knowledge of what's going on paints of them. And then the people who don't do their homework to say, right? Let's see, because what's that saying? There's your side, my side, and then there's then there's the truth, which. Only those people involved were there. So that's to my other point. Why would they lie about that? Why mm-hmm. would somebody like Monique or J- uh, J- uh, Janet mm-hmm. um, take so much effort? It seems like they could be doing other things, which they probably are. But why would they go to such lengths to prove that they're right? You know, well, probably because they believe in their truth. I mean, unfortunately, if, if you're a person that actually stands for I mean, I. I find it. I have yet to meet somebody who's been involved in a lie or something like that that stands on it like a rock until they go into the <laughs> grave. You know what I mean? Like, you know what I mean? Right. Because the story usually changes. Yeah. But you know, in PR we say um, your name is sometimes all you have. have. Warren Buffett says um, quite eloquently. He says, you know, companies can afford to lose a lot of money because you know, mm-hmm. and I'm paraphrasing here. But you can get that back. Mm -hmm. But companies or individuals, you cannot afford to lose one ounce of your reputation. Back in the day, um, uh, here's my history, Mm -hmm. um, PR history Mm -hmm. stuff coming out here. But back in the day, people would just, you know, handshake on deals. Or their name, their word was good enough. Oh, you know, on my great granddaddy's name, I promise you. Buster, I'm going to pay you this money for this land. Good. All right. Good. See you next week with the money. Mm-hmm. It was good. But now we got to write that three contracts. A, all and, that, you know, and it still ain't And some clad. collateral. Put some collateral down. So the point that I'm making is to a lot of people, even in 2018, 
Your name is all you yeah. have. My your name is your credit. My mother always told me that. Right. There's a lot of some people's names. You can go out in the street and say, Donald Trump. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You see what I'm saying? Right. That's all. It's going to evoke right. shadiness and just the Just laughter. Right. Laughing. And so, yeah. so there you have it, Janet. So I get where somebody like Janet or Monique is like, uh-uh. Yeah, you're if not going to. the last thing I do, I'm going to yeah. clear my name. And all money ain't good money. You've got some people that will throw their name out the window for a few coins. You know? Well, you know, and then Janet, you know, uh, probably in good faith, did West, uh, Fresh Prince thinking it was going to be a good well, thing yeah, and but, she's but, going to but, get blackballed. Yeah, but the thing is, you know, you, you, you do something in good faith and then you get this snotty-nosed rapper from Philadelphia that comes to Hollywood, everything is handed to him and he starts, you know, feeling himself. You, you know, you weren't expecting that. And this is another angle that I, I haven't seen anybody talk about. Maybe she talked about it, I don't mm-hmm. recall. Maybe that's why it's coming to my mind. But there's also that other thing of dark, the dark-skinned woman mm-hmm. being bad. She's evil. She's hard yes, to deal with. Yeah. But then you get, you know, light and airy, light skin, no shade to light skin mm-hmm. women. Now, so that's not why I'm mm-hmm. taking this. So miss me with all that. Right. But then you have this beautiful per- perception wise, mm-hmm. light skin woman who's soft spoken and oh mm-hmm. will, mm-hmm. oh feel and all this other stuff. And she's the good one right. all of a sudden. And right. she gets to ride off into the sunset with the rest of the show. But then, like I said, on the other hand, I'm this black ass Aunt Viv, the dark skin one, she's hard to deal with and she's mm-hmm. evil. And so to me, that's kind of what I see from a different standpoint yeah. that yeah. we are conti- not we, but society and somebody like Will in the Fresh Prince show are continuously demonizing chocolate women, mm. whether they're intentionally doing that or, or not. not. That's yeah. what's going on. Mm. That, that, that's super, super deep. Super, super deep. So you guys just uh, stay tuned on that. Again, you guys can check out the link and just give us your comments and concerns and tell us what, what you think about uh, is what she's saying uh, coming. You know, what do you think about what um, Janet Hubert is saying? You want to call her on Yeah, yeah. I don't want to call her on I don't want I don't want her visiting my house right, or, 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 or dropping mention, some right, notes right. in the comment section. Okay. So she is not my aunt. She has not ever sat at my table. And it's just a character she played. And it's just... But, you know, <laughs> but unfortunately, that's all people really know her as is Aunt Viv and not mm. even just Aunt Viv. I mean, I, I've seen her in a few other uh, productions, you know, in minor roles. But, I'm, but you probably have. But for mm. most part, when you see Janet Hubert, oh, that's the dark skin Aunt Viv. Yeah, that's how I've heard people respond. Yeah, to her, the, to dark, her. the dark Aunt Viv. Yeah. And like I said, I, I um, another person that that can clear a lot of this up is Avery Brooks. And Avery Brooks, unfortunately, has passed. Yeah, I'm about to say he ain't him. Yeah, what he about ain't. Jeffrey? Jeffrey could probably clear a lot of this stuff up too, but again, you know, when or, it, or did he pass? No, 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 he's still here. Um, but again, it's it's just another thing that um, I want to bring everybody's attention to because I think it, it brings to the point which is going to go into your show about what we're talk we're going to be talking about in the, in your segment about what's going to be happening. And so, since we're going to be talking about your segment, let's just let's just. Are you going to extend it over? Yeah, let's I don't just, want to cut it off, brother. No, I want no. a whole forty-five. No, no, minutes. no, no, no. No, well, you're going to get that plus this. Okay. So we're gonna we're we're gonna cross over. Okay. And we're gonna go into Demetra K's <clears throat> topic, which I think is very important because guess what? Finally, there ain't no finally. Damn it! Finally, D is seeing. Ain't no, it ain't no finally. How, how long have I been saying what you're going to be talking about? In, well, in, I mean, you've been saying it for a while, but that's like I always say, brother, it's about delivery. Delivery. It's all delivery. about delivery. You guys are interested. Read the book of Ike. It's called I, Ike. It's, it's Ike Turner's uh, answer to I, Tina, which was a very <laughs> a big, big book. And before that book, around the same time those books were written, there was a book written by a beautiful, gorgeous sister. And guess what? Queen Latifah took her look. She sure did. Back in the day. Uh-huh. Uh, well, rightfully so. It's yeah. a beautiful look. It's a beautiful you know? look. Uh, Shirazad Ali. Mm-hmm. And she said what a good black woman needs is a punch that in the mouth. That ain't what the hell she said. What did she say? Why you keep lying on that lady? Well, that's the, the premise that of the book. What the <laughs> that's what I got What out book of. was you reading? <laughs> the one punch him in the mouth. That's all you read, huh? You said, where does that, where does that, uh, uh, the last chapter, paragraph six? Okay. <laughs> when, 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 yeah, when it all doesn't all work out. That's all I need to read. Right. When it all doesn't work out. I don't yeah. need to know nothing else in the beginning, the middle of the book. I That's, just need to know to punch her in her mouth. That's right. To the moon, Alice. To the moon. That's no. That. no. 
Okay, well, that's you real. You ever heard that term? Reading is fundamental. Yeah, I've heard it. I've heard. I it. want you to apply that next apply time that. you try to read that. Book. All right. The okay. real title of the book is called "The Black Man's Guide to mm-hmm. Understanding the Black." Woman. Absolutely, by Sharazad Ali. Ali. And sometimes I like to I, I refer to her as Doctor Sharazad Ali. Mm-hmm. I don't know why, because I feel like. She should be, if she's not already, I don't know if she's not, but she should be, have an honorary doctorate. I mean, because to me, she took mastery of the subject of the black man's guide to understanding the black woman. Um, and I said not too long ago on one of my Facebook posts, uh, black women of 2018 sure could use the wisdom of Shahrazad Ali right now. Because, what about Ike Turner? Uh, I haven't read that book. You need to read it. Eat the cake, anime. I don't know. I've seen the movie. Okay. I don't know it, how close to... Do, no, it oh. wasn't close at all. But but the point is, it, you should have gave me notice if you were going to walk from the hospital after giving birth. Oh, we don't want to read that <laughs> book, okay? We don't want to read that book, but I digress. Okay. And so, I really feel like that black women especially need the wisdom of uh, Shahrazad Ali. Um, for those of you guys who don't know who Shahrazad Ali is, she... Um, I don't know how closely tied she is with the Nation of Islam now, but I know that she's given a lot of credit to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad for her teachings and, you know, her being able to birth such, I call, you know, what um, a historical, most monumental piece of art is what this book is. And so um, she's made a lot of talk show circuits and things like that, defending her book. But unfortunately, a lot of women do not agree with her ideology about black su- women. What a surprise. Um. And I've listened to a copious amount of her videos and things like that. And she's, her message is very consistent. Consistent. And <clears throat> she's also made the point that my book is not even really necessarily for men. It's for women as well. It's for everybody. Mm-hmm. So we can get... Because her point uh, uh, is really that the black man has been dissected backward, forward, upside down, and inside out. The white man, the white woman. But... The black woman has never really been examined. She's never right. really been taken the task. Held accountable? Well, and, and held accountable, really just been, like she said, dissected to look at in, you know, as a whole and say, okay, what is going on with this black woman um, to cause such a schism? Now, she never asserts, and nor am I asserting that there's nothing wrong with black men per se, but as a black woman, she's given her point of view on how we as black women can do better and how black men can help us do that and to understand us. And so I've seen so much stuff unfold, whether it's on Facebook, just in general. And it had me thinking about the state of the black woman. Tommy Sotomayor. No. Who has been showing a lot of this stuff. Don't ever say my name and his name. Yes. (laughs) I know a lot of people, a lot of sisters don't like him. But but remember, this is what we were arguing about before. I'm not saying he's right. It's it's about delivery. delivery. It's the delivery. But... He was, his whole thing was saying, look at what our women are doing. But see, it's not to get off topic, but sure. I don't want to give Tommy credit where credit is not due. Okay. Because for one thing, I feel like, and then this is where a lot of his fans are probably going to come for me. I don't care. But Tommy is not the right man to examine a black woman because first of all, he doesn't even sound like he dates black women. Mm-hmm. He, and he, for lack of better words, hates black women. Okay. <clears throat> I think we can draw that fair conclusion just basically how he speaks about black women. And so I don't think he is the authority to try to take black women a task. I think you need to have a little bit more expertise in dealing with black women, not just because because he to me, the um, Tommy's um, ideology about, about about black women come from his experience with black right. women. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't sound like he was 100 percent upright in dealing with the women the black women that has him so jaded too. Okay. So, and so is some of the stuff he's saying correct? Yeah, I don't disagree with uh, some of the stuff he's saying. I just don't like how he, he says it. Right. You know what I mean? And so here we are um, with some of the things that has caused me to think about Shahrazad Ali's teachings. And one of them is, <clears throat> um, and forgive me guys, I'm giving getting over a cold. So if you hear me clear my throat, that's why. Now, a lot of you guys have probably seen the update about June's Beauty Supply. June's Beauty Supply is the incident, and I know we've had plenty of them, where the Asian owner uh, punched the black lady in the mouth after she hit him, brushed him, pushed him, however you want to classify it. She laid hands on him, and then in turn, he punched her in the mouth to the tune of her needing three stitches. And so this protest ensued. 
People were out there trying to shut him down and this, that, and the other. For a while, it seemed like it was working until he put up a sign in his store, his window saying 50% off of, I guess, weave product, whatever in the store. <laughs> and from that point, you saw a line of black women out the door. Okay. Now, I don't know if it was because it was so many black women in the store, but some of the protesters were saying that he didn't even trust a, a bunch of black women in the store at the same time. And so as one comes out, he lets one in, but yet <laughs> these black women, and we'll show the video, we'll show the video. but these black women are lined up in there to get 50% off of whatever June is selling them. And so what revolution, but at the same time, you have these protesters who are out there like, what are you guys doing? Mm -hmm. And so in the video, you'll also see there's a black woman um, who's vexed with the protesters to the point of, she goes over there and she's, Nigga this and whoop 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 and F you and what the F you that's, mean. That's and, the one with the missing edges, right? If you want to say that, okay, yes. Gotcha. And she's mad at the protesters. And so, you know, one thing that comes to my mind, because Shahzad Ali talked about this, and she, she still talks about it a lot, but we've heard many of the greats, Malcolm X, uh, Elijah Muhammad, uh, Farrakhan, just anybody you can think of, say this phrase. The black woman is the most unprotected and the most disrespected person in the world. I mean, I've even heard white people say that. The mm -hmm. guy who's um, uh, investigating R. Kelly for over 20 years said during his um, research, research. Uh, what's going on with R. Kelly and these young black women, he says uh, he lear he's learned that the most uncared about person in the world is a black woman. Okay, so I say all that to say I'm not disagreeing with that completely. But how can black women cry about being so disrespected and unprotected when you won't even go out on a, on a limb and do that for yourself? Because when the first video came out of the Asian man punching the lady in the mouth, causing her three stitches, I got in a lot of trouble. I don't say trouble because I can't get in trouble. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people tried to take me to task for saying... We as black women, we need to stop being hard headed. Why are you in there anyway? And so now you believe now you find out fat meat is greasy. Asian people do not really love black people like that. You get punched in the mouth. But you've heard just a week ago before that incident, you heard of three other black women getting beat down in the Asian brooms, right? yeah, nail shop. And so here it is happening to you. And now you want black men and black people in general to go out there and protect you. But yet you won't even do your part and stay out of the shop. And so then we see this video with these droves of black women waiting in the very same line of this man who brutalizes black women. In fact, that wasn't his first time doing it. It's right. rumored or said, mm -hmm. I don't know how much of a rumor it is, that he has a history with brutalizing black women. Okay. And so... We have that saying, oh, the black woman is the most unprotected and most disrespected person in the world. Well, why don't you help people protect you? Here this man is trying to protect black women. Mm -hmm. He's out there protesting. I'm sure there's other stuff he could have been doing. And yet here's this black woman. And I will, I will use that uh, really loosely with her. Black woman. She's to the point to where I, I, I'd imagine she probably could have hit him. Mm -hmm. She's so mad. You know, mad at I, the I fact that he's out there protecting her. That's what well, she was arguing that you don't protect us. You ain't doing so nothing what was for he doing? us. Right. And so, but the minute you get yourself, your wig split or you drug up out of there, then you're going to be wanting that very same yeah. black man to, you, yeah, to make you your video go, go viral mm -hmm. or to protect you. And so my point to that is we can't expect everybody else to respect us and to protect us if we are not doing that ourselves. You know what I mean? It's like, mm -hmm. I, and that's like me walking into a lion's den and saying, well, I'm a going in there because I don't think nothing going to happen to me. But then when I go in there, I'm hollering for somebody to come save me. Well, why did you walk in there in the first place? So the other point that I have is I've been seeing a lot of other rants and stuff on Facebook. And one came from this one girl saying that um, there are no good black men out there in America anymore. Black men, good black men don't exist. You know, you guys are this, you're that. You have babies, you don't take care of them. And so she's got her an African man, a man from the motherland. And mm -hmm. 
you know, she, and she he treats her so much better and all this other and, stuff. Uh, until he tells you about her, his other wives back at the homeland. Oh, see, you said it, I did. Yeah, I don't, his I don't, other wives right. and uh, their traditional way of doing things where the women, you know. Right. And so I said to her, and I wasn't mean about her or anything. I said, well, I got, if she happens to be from Texas and so was my man. I said, well, I got a good black man from Texas. Right. But see, and I, I'm imagining this is how she was saying it to me. Now, see, you went there. Now you want me to go there. Well, you want my attention? I, you going to get my attention. <laughs> That man, you in the in, in your profile picture, she said all kind of stuff about him, mm-hmm. said all kind of stuff about me, and so I said... Did, did you get your shoe off and get ready to... No, I didn't. To me, it was funny. I mean, that lady don't know me. Yeah, you take your earrings off, get ready yeah, to go. Yeah, and she did that. I didn't need to do American, that. American uh, black lady. As, as my dad says, never never let a, a classless person outclass you. Sure. So sure. I was not going to get below, below that with okay. her. But I said, well... Maybe because you have a deplorable attitude, that's why American black men don't want to mess with you no more. There it is. You know what I mean? Maybe it has very little to do with them. It has a lot to do with you. I mean, just how you came after me, I wasn't mean to you. Right. But you felt like, well, let me give it to you now because that's just who you are. So you're not just like that with black men. You're like that with black women as well. You're just a nasty acting person. So would it be fair to say that that behavior is a learned behavior? Uh, yeah, it's a learned behavior, but you know, I, I just uh, to me, you're saying there's no good black men out there. You know, remember a long time ago when we started these shows and we were talking about different things and me defending my leader, Tommy Sotomayor. <laughs> um, Yo, leader. Yeah, D- didn't I say? Uh, and everybody says, "Oh, that's you know, you look like the type you, you date white women." I've never dated a white woman in my life. In your life. And the reason why, I, yeah, and, and the reason why I haven't done that, don't get me wrong, I, I've been pushed. Number one, I've never seen a white woman I've been attracted to. I've never seen that. I'm not right. saying I wouldn't do it. I'm just you saying, wouldn't. no, I, I probably wouldn't. You. Yeah, uh, I've never seen one that I would be attracted to mm-hmm. yet. And then number two, I love sisters so much, I would have to date every black woman in the world. True. To come to that conclusion that black women ain't shit. To come to an then, absolute. Yes. Yeah, to an absolute. And, and so yeah, as more black young girls are being born and coming into womanhood, that's never going to happen for me. So I have too much of a, not that I, you know, I can pick any woman that I want in the world. I don't know why I can't, but you know what I mean? I would right. have to, to come to an absolute to say when black women ain't shit, I can't come to that conclusion. Right. Oh, I, I agree with that. I don't think there's any absolute. I yeah. mean, hell, there's a lot of black women who will tell you they got them a good black man. Mm-hmm. You know, right, right. And I, I know a bunch of them that are good, uh, good examples to me. They've been married for thirty years, twenty five right. years, and they don't have a problem with it. Yeah, and you know, with dark, dark chocolate sisters, mm-hmm. and just happy. I thought, you know, that's why I don't understand this color paradigm. Black is black, right? So, you know, uh, if your man is. Uh, uh, high yellow, and you know he got some you know uh, Negro in him. He's mm-hmm. white. That, that's just the bottom line, right? And so, and then because I, I know we got about seven minutes left on this segment, no, no, we know we're going all the way through. Okay, and so um, another rant that I saw was from a younger black girl. I call she's a girl to me. Mm-hmm. She's in her young twenties. Okay, um, I'm a woman. What you got? I well, I think there's a lot that goes into actually being a woman. Mm-hmm. Age doesn't necessarily make you that. But that's just Age my opinion. Some people might number. say me and being 47, I ain't a woman yet either. Right. Um, she goes on this long soliloquy on Facebook talking about how black women aren't, you know, teaching their sons this, that, and the <laughs> other. And, you know, you're, um, you, you expect teaching them to expect women to cook and do this and do that. But they're not doing this and doing that. I'm not necessarily saying that I disagree with her wholeheartedly. But I just wonder... How can you take a man to task when you ain't none of that you taking him to task about? Thank you. And I know this for a fact about this woman, child, Mm -hmm. girl, who was ranting and raving about black men. And so we often hear this term used a lot when it comes to black women who want you to know who they are. They say, I'm a strong black woman. I don't think anybody necessarily knows what that means, Mm -hmm. especially when it comes from somebody who has to tell you all the Mm -hmm. time. Because I feel like if you're a strong black woman, that's people will see that without you right. uttering one exactly. word. Exactly, you don't have to say anything. Like, wow, she she's you know very strong, confident. Look at she knows mm-hmm. who she is. You don't have to kick the door in. Right. I want to tell y'all, I'm a strong black mm-hmm. woman. Yeah, there's an old saying: power is where power goes. Right. So if, so if you're all that, you, you, people are going to know that. They're going to see that from mm-hmm. across the street. Like, right. damn, mm-hmm. who is that? If you're an attractive person and you walk into a room, people will notice that. And not even just outwardly, but inwardly. They will know that you have a strong sense of self 
You're unbothered. You don't need to put on airs. You don't have to walk into a room half naked to, you know, command attention. So that's something you don't have to say right. to nobody. You know, not, not not to pat myself on the back, but as you know, a lot of people do not care for me. They, oh, that's not true. Well, you know, you know what I'm talking about in the political realm. You know, I'm I'm uh, this. I'm a loud right. mouth. I'm this is that. But one thing everybody agrees on: I'm strong on my conviction. Well, you're supposed to be. I think everybody's supposed to be. Now, and this is the thing too. Let's clarify that. I'm not saying this about yeah. you, mm-hmm. but you should be strong on your convictions if it's right, mm-hmm. and if it's the right thing. Don't be strong on no BS. Right. Because everybody can see it's BS, and it, you just look silly holding on to something that is just BS for a lack of yeah, better words. It, it, it's not tenable. But um, you know, in the political realm here, I'm not saying uh, you know you got to like me or whatever. But like, if I go to city council, a lot of people. The city elders, there. Mm-hmm. you know, I'm not a city elder, elder, but I guess I would be because I've been here so long. But, um, you know, you, I get that mutual respect. I don't like this dude, but. Yeah, I mean, if you if you know who you are, other mm-hmm. people will just fall in line right. or they'll they fall right. in line or they'll they fall away from right. you, which is optimal and, for you in either way. Right. And, you know, and to be to be smart is the fact that after 41 years, I'm not going anywhere. So you don't have to like me, but you got to respect me like, hey, he's not going anywhere. This is what he does. And just even if you it. don't respect me, stay away from me. Right. And, just, and I'm right. not going to be bothered by it either way, but right. just don't bring your disrespect around right. me. Right, exactly. And, and and that's what it is. You know, I, anywhere I go, people are like, well, that's how he is. That's Donovan. Yeah, but you you're know. not a bad dude. Yeah. You know, just some people just don't agree with the, your viewpoints, and that's mm-hmm. fine. And that's that's fine. what makes yeah. the world go around. Right. Now, here, here's an old saying, mm-hmm. and I don't want to take away from no, the no, subject, because we got plenty of time. Yeah, we got plenty of time. Uh, when every, in a democracy, when everybody is thinking the same, somebody's not thinking. True. Because you're supposed to have different opinions and different... Yes. Democracy is about mass confusion and mass opinions and Democracy, mass fighting. Democracy, philosophy. Right. Philosophy asks us the question, how do we know? Thank you. How do we know that what you're saying is true? How do I know what mm-hmm. I'm saying is true? How do we know this is a table? Right. It asks us to ask questions. Well, can, can, can I answer in, in, in the way your daughter would answer? Uh, uh, how's that? That's a social construct. That's a social construct, yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm so happy she's back in school so she can take her social construct self over there for a couple more months. Right, right. But but again, like you were saying, you don't have to blurt out, uh, people, I'm this, yeah, I'm that. People, people will see that. I, mm-hmm. like, I don't think I've ever in my life uttered the words, I'm a strong black woman. Strong, educated black woman. I mean, but won't people already see that? Mm-hmm. It's like me saying this water is wet. Well, I can mm-hmm. see you don't need to tell me that. Right, right. I know water is wet. Right, right. You know, some things you just don't need to make a big old announcement. I feel like people who do that is because they know they're not. Mm-hmm. But it's like, I'm going to talk as loud right. as voices as I can. Right. So if I keep saying it loud enough, people eventually, are believe it. yeah, they'll believe it. Mm-hmm. But you don't believe it. Right, right. Um, and like I said, just dealing with you, um, you know, this is my opinion. I've known you for a long time. Watch out now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> She's about to stab me off. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, you walk it like you talk it. I mean, you, you're not one of these people. Oh, I've got these degrees. I got the. De- I mean, which I rarely even talk about. Right. To be honest with you, yeah, and, I, and, no, no, and, and, and you don't. I, but but by by your diction, by how you uh, you know you present yourself. I mean, you you're, you're you keep it real. You have long hair. You have short hair. You're you know you're you're you. I'm short. I'm fat. I'm skinny. Right. Okay. You know. <laughs> No, but, but but you know what I mean. It's like you don't have to. That's deep. Here well, comes yeah, deep. I mean, I just confident. I think you come that, uh, to that point when you know who you are. I don't listen. I'm not gonna be on this show every week. And like I said this on my mm. last show with a different outfit because I'm not trying <laughs> to please you like that. Unless if you don't like my outfits and my shirts that I wear, listen. I set up a PayPal right. called Demetrius Wardrobe, mm. and you can send money there. And I go get whatever you want me to wear. But I'm not trying, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful when I say this. But I'm not trying to please everybody mm. else. I'm only trying to please a few people. That's myself. God, my man, and my child, and few other people, but that's about it. But mostly, I'm trying to please me, right? Because I've been lecturing about getting some booty shorts on here so we can get all the views up. Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe not next life. Time. Yeah, not next okay. Life time. There you go. There um, you go. But yeah, and so the question that I have, since we're going to run right through, no, no, yeah, just, just we're going right to uh, for those of you guys on the podcast, uh, stay tuned. I actually, I will um, give us a. How much we got? Oh, 47, 47 seconds. seconds. Mm-hmm. When it goes off, I'll give us a second if you want to join us on the podcast. I know mm-hmm. some of you guys are at work and then we'll continue. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'll set this question up um, as we come back. Okay. 
because I want you to really help me with this. All right. Um, and maybe somebody wants to mm-hmm. chime in on the podcast. Mm-hmm. How does a strong black woman end up with a weak black man? Wow, that's a good question. I, I, I really want to dissect that a little bit more in the next segment. How does a strong black woman end up with a weak black man? Because oftentimes we hear strong black women mm-hmm. whining about weak black men. Mm-hmm. All the time. So how, how does that work? Yeah, we're going to get to in the next segment. How does that work? <laughs>